So, you all know I'm not a preacher, right? I was forced into standing here today against my will. But it's okay. The Lord still speaks. You know? So, I want to talk to mature believers today. So, ask your neighbor, is that you? Because I'm about to offend some people. And if you decide you don't want to come back after today, I will know I have offended you. Pastor Ji, I that prophet is now. You don't understand, this anointing is so heavy, this mic is weighing me down. No, it's fine. If it's not, yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I will hang on this thing, which is also not very... We will make it work. We will make it work. You will support me, I will support them. So, tell your neighbor there is a price. Tell them the price is you. Ask them, did you know that? I'm so sorry. I am in so much pain as I'm standing here. So if I look like I'm walking as if I'm holding a number two, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> My back is in agony. Um, I've received some few arrows this week and I'm still recovering. That's also okay. Na? Yes. Pressed but not crushed. Na? So tell your neighbor again, say there is a price. And that price is you. Why do I say the price is you? Why am I saying the price is you? Can anybody tell me? I said I'm talking to mature believers today, so if you've walked with the Lord for a while, you know you are the price. Can somebody put up their hand and tell me? Anybody? There's an uncle there. Can we have a mic, please? An uncle. The first price is me. The solution somewhere is me. Christ in me at work through me, the hope of glory. Mm. So I must believe in myself. There's nothing wrong with me. Where I go, what I do, you are the solution. Christ, had you born for this day and hour and moment to solve the problem. Or to implement some new idea, so like uh, maybe like coding or artificial intelligence. But Christ is you, work with you, the hope of God. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Uncle. Anyone else? There's my Ethel. Uh, I would say that uh, you have to sacrifice yourself, so you are the price. Amen. Okay. So. 
definitely. Um, can we look at Matthew twenty two fourteen? Okay. So we see Matthew twenty two fourteen says, For many are called, but few are chosen. Okay, and then we look at Jesus when he was walking the earth. Out of millions, billions of people, he had 12 disciples. So this is what the Bible means when it says, many are called, but few are chosen. So some of them, they heard him preach, they were healed by him, they ate from his hands, the food he blessed, they, they even came close. Sorry. How come the people are here? They are here in the church. Do you want to go to the church? So, some sat with him. Some heard his teachings. Some encountered him. Some were healed by him. But they didn't qualify to come close. Why? Who knows how the 12 apostles died? 12 disciples, apostles. Do you know? The only one who I would say died kind of a normal death is John after being exiled to an island where he wrote the book of Revelation from. But the rest of them, and this was after he was boiled in oil, by the way, and he didn't die. So the rest of the disciples, all of them were crucified. Some upside down, some stoned to death, but all of them were crucified. All right? So do you think that the reason why Jesus chose them was maybe because he knew that they would go all the way? You see, when a soldier enlists in the war, or for the army. You enlist to die. You enlist to protect, to serve your people at all costs. So when I say to you the price is your life, I mean, are you at that point where you are giving God all of you? Or are you still just testing the waters. You still don't know that Jesus is everywhere, that he doesn't choose a building. He chooses people to fill. So instead of church hopping or being in the church and out the church and in the church and out the church, realizing that no matter where you are, he's there. It's not about the church. It's not about a man or a woman. It's about Jesus. And you can encounter him anywhere. I mean, Peter encountered him the first time on the water when he was fishing. And when he said to Peter, follow me, Peter dropped every single thing. Peter dropped it and he followed. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Wait, Lord. I need to go and fetch my mother. Wait, Lord. I need to go and fetch my sister. Peter knew that this is the Messiah and if I can't save them, he can. So I'm going to follow him and he's going to take care of them. And so he left everything and Peter became one of the cornerstones that the church is built on. They were the first fruits of the gospel, the 12. They were the first to receive the Holy Ghost. They were the first to speak in tongues. So we think that 
this day and age, you don't need to physically die. You don't need to actually, the time will come for that, by the way, but it's not here yet. But I am scared for some of us because I know you will renounce Jesus the moment there's a gun to your head. I know it for a fact. And that just tells me that our salvation is conditional. Our salvation is questionable. Because if you do not enlist to die, don't enlist. Don't enlist. See, being chosen is not a trophy. It's not a trophy, it's a death. And that is why many are called, but few are chosen. See, people go around these days, you've got a prophet on every corner, you've got a pastor on every corner, and you've got an evangelist on every corner. You've got prophesies, people prophesying on Facebook, Every single day there's a prophecy. Receive your miracle money. Receive your husband. Receive your wife. Receive your this. Receive your that. How about receive Jesus? How about repent and be baptized? How about that? Because last time I checked, that is the gospel. Last time I checked, Jesus stayed in a tent. Not even a real tent, not even the tents that we have today. He stayed in cloth. Met stokke, fast gemaak. And that's where he slept. And it was okay. This is why the Bible says, blessed is the poor. Blessed are you when you are poor. You see, not everyone will need to die. It is not everyone's call to die but if it comes to it are you willing if it comes to it are you sold out does everything you have belong to him you see I have nothing I have nothing my is like so fast forward Sorry. So, are you willing to die? You see, I love Uncle Shad spoke about trust. And God wants you to trust Him to death. He wants you to trust Him to death. Let me tell you, the grave is a cold, dark place. It's confined. So if you feel confined, if you feel like you can't move, if you feel like your back is against the wall and you almost cannot breathe, you feel like you're suffocating, you are dying. And you are dying because God wants to resurrect something within you. Something that he has placed there and that can only come forth if you die. So, I said I'm going to offend some people. Are you ready to die? Jesus said, when you want to follow me, you must first deny yourself. First, deny your wisdom. Deny your knowledge. Deny your family. Deny your friends. Are you willing to deny your husband? Are you willing to deny your mother? Are you willing to deny your children? And choose him first all day, every day. Before everything, before everyone. Are you willing to look like a fool for him? Are you willing to walk 
barren and ashamed for years until he brings forth that child? Are you willing to look like a fool, single, like an idiot, no husband for years? Are you willing to look like a fool for him? People look at you. Who can I say that now? No, he's a trouty. Vaas ham and then oh, yes, I'm not say so us. The very man I revel in. Who told you? Who told you? What if Jesus called that woman to be alone? He can do it, and he has done it in the past. He opens and closes wombs as he wishes. He gives life to seed as he wishes. You see, we like this nice gospel because then we are not accountable. We don't like to be accountable. We don't like to be held responsible for our actions. We like to look at your weakness and his weakness and we size it up and we say, okay, no, we are all weak. We all sin and fall short of the glory. That is the scripture, eh? And yet he says, chase righteousness. Chase holiness. Resist sin unto death. He says it. Go and find it if you don't know what I'm talking about. He says it in his word. But we don't want to. We like the sin. We like to take a sip of alcohol every now and again. You know, Jesus turned water into wine. We like that. You know, Paul said to Timothy, drink a little bit of wine for your stomach. So, it's in the Bible. You know, a little glass of wine every now and again, it's okay. Who are you fooling? <laughs> You're fooling yourself, my friends. You're fooling yourself because guess what? This is your walk. It's not my walk. So you don't have to convince me of anything but the one who sees everything. You can come here and stand here with your pretty church outfit on Sunday, looking all righteous and holy, and then you leave here on Sunday, mo Sunday afternoon, and your wife doesn't recognize you. Like, where is the man that was just there at church now? Like, can you come? Can he come home with me? I don't want this dude. Where is the wife that was lifting up holy hands and singing like an angel now in church? Can she please come with me? Can this one return? So, we know what it is to look holy. We know what it is to look spiritual. We've got the most spiritual faces. But you see, like Prophet always says, those closest to you will attest of who you are. So, Are you ready to give yourself up? Are you ready to give everything to God? You see, as believers, we want, we like to hoard. We want to keep everything. We want to keep. You know, um, I want and I want and I want and I want. You know, when I go to church, I want to receive. And when I go to church, Lord, I am waiting and I'm ready. And all good and well, yes. But did you see your sister is not well today? That's the gospel. Did you see your brother's countenance has dropped? Did you pray for him during prayer? Because like Mama Keisha said, we are a praying church. We believe in the power of prayer. Did you pray for your brother or sister? You see, I am poured out as a drink offering daily. My kids want the perfect stepford mom. My husband wants a Holy Spirit, tongue-talking, demon-slaying, spirit-filled woman. 
the leaders they want, a friend sometimes, a mother sometimes, and sometimes they don't even want me in their faces because I can be very harsh. So they hide from me, especially when they've done something wrong. I'm pressed but not crushed. I'm in the grave but I'm still breathing. I'm not dying. See, when, when you encounter death, when you encounter, you know I've died. See, the day I laid on that theater table in the hospital and I saw my little baby's body, lifeless, doctors couldn't do anything. I knew I died. The last breath in my body, he was perfect, perfect. Jesus decided to take him. I died. I died when I was standing over my father's body. And he said goodbye to us. Yeah, I am a minister of God. I prayed, Lord. I fasted. Lord, I give you all of me. Give me my child. Give me my father. Give me my father-in-law. Why can I not have them? I do your will. I pray more than the average person. I fast more than the average person. Why can I not have my people? I meditate on your word. I do everything according to your word. Why can I not have them? This is death. This is death. When you stand in front of your bed for your child who is in the streets and you don't know if they are alive or if they are dead, you don't know if they've eaten. You don't know where they are. You know they are busy with the wrong things. And you cry before the Lord. Lord, I know you can do it. Save my child. Save my marriage, Lord. I know you can. When that stubborn man or that stubborn woman continually humiliates you, breaks you down, says horrible things to you, and you know that what they are saying is not you, it's not true. That is death. When your back is against the wall and you have no choice but to reach your hands to heaven and say, Lord, Hear me, I am undone. Your will be done. I can't take this, I can't do this. But your will be done. You see, when we come to Christ, we don't understand that there is a price. And the price is you. You are the price. You see, salvation has been given freely. But to draw closer, you need to go through the furnace. You see, and this day, we, we don't have the Pharisees and the Sadducees as they were back then where they're going to come and slay you. So God has to use what is around you. So he does. You see, when, when I did not plan to have any more children, and here this child comes in, I am overjoyed, and I am preparing for this child through contraceptive. This child was conceived. 
and then just for him to be taken. And I'm saying, Lord, but I don't understand. Why did you give him to take him? Why? I needed to die. I needed to die. I needed to be rid of myself. You see, I could not be confident in the fact that I have brought forth two children in this world. I cannot be confident in the fact that I've got a womb and ovaries and fallopian tubes and I can bring a child, I can carry a child. I cannot be confident in myself. He wants us to be fully and completely confident in Him and only Him. So He will strip you of everything that you find strength in. He will strip you of everything that you draw strength from because He is alone your source and He is a jealous God. He will not share His glory with no man he will not. He wants you and he wants all of you. He demands all of you, not half of you. He doesn't want just a little bit. He wants all of you, every single part of you. Even the part that you think is ugly and undeserving, he wants it because he will use it. You see, I would disqualify myself. I would disqualify myself because I do not meet the standards of righteousness, of holiness. I do not. But I'm a work in progress in His hands. So tell your neighbor again, say, you are the price. Even though you are pulled in every direction, you will not be crushed. You are dying, but you will re be resurrected. You see, you need to be poured out daily, like Apostle Paul said. We are poured out daily as a drink offering. Daily. Go to 1 Samuel 15, verse 22. You see, the sacrifices of God are broken spirit, broken spirit and a contrite heart. That is a repentant heart. And Samuel said, so we all know the story of when Saul was king. So at this point, Saul went ahead of Samuel and he sacrificed because all hell was breaking loose. You see, the armies were coming. Saul, Saul saw the armies coming against them, the Philistines. He saw his soldiers fearing and running away. So yeah, Saul is standing and he's saying, the prophet said I must wait seven days, but all hell is breaking loose. Why would God tell me to wait seven days when all hell is breaking loose? My people have lost confidence in me as their king. My people have lost confidence in him as their God. They do not believe he is still with us. He went and he sacrificed before Samuel came, and when Samuel came, Samuel said to him, Hath the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Change for me to NLT, please. But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord? your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice listen obedience is better than sacrifice and submission better than offering the fat of rams he said wait 
He said, oh, wait. After that, God said, he was sorry that he anointed Saul. He was sorry. This is where, why David was anointed after Saul. Now we know David is a man after God's own heart. Why is that? Why is David a man after God's own heart? Because he sought the Lord's face at every corner. He sought the Lord's communion. He says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. David teaches us that God does not desire burnt offerings, but his desire is for us to have a broken and a contrite heart, broken and a repentant heart. This is his sacrifices. David teaches us this. When David was doing wrong, and you see this is where accountability comes in. David knew the block screw, you know, because I had for Bathsheba gesien baad en to maak hy vir Bathsheba se man dood en Bathsheba wat pregnant geword ne what did he do after that he went and laid before the feet of the Lord in the temple and he repented the child he pleaded with the Lord God said to him I'm taking this child he pleaded with God and he said Lord please God, after his pleading, God said to him, don't worry. I will give you another child. But David sought the Lord. David waited on God. He was stout, he had verkeerde goed aangevang. But he knew where to find God. He knew that this is my papa. And no matter what, I can return to him. I am going to come shamefaced before him, head bowed down, banging my chest. Lord, I am sorry. Forgive me for my pride. Forgive me for my arrogance. Forgive me for not being accountable. Forgive me for not taking responsibility. You see, Adam did not take responsibility. That is why we were cursed. David forgave, Jesus forgave David. I am sure if Adam took accountability, he would have received mercy. But he didn't. And it is still rife today in the church where we pass the bucket. We do not take responsibility for our own actions. We take selfish decisions, conceited decisions, and we say, but this is God's way. How can you say that when God's way is for His people, when we were on His mind at the beginning, the middle, and the end? How can you say that? How can you just write people off when God Himself died for that person? Who are you? Who are you? No, I'm not going to deal with this person. What if that person came to come and put the last nail in the coffin for you to die? And yet, no. They don't treat me nice. I'm a queen. I'm a king. I am my father's daughter. I am my father's son. So I am a king, I am a holy nation, I am a priest. Yes, the Bible says that, but Jesus walks in humility and he never rejected anyone. He says it in his word, whosoever shall call upon my name will be saved and I shall by no means turn away. Why are you turning people away? Whose character is that? Whose character are you you imitating or portraying? Who's? He went for the prostitute. He went for the taxman. He went for the fisherman. Everything that society rejected, he went for. So why have we as believers become so fast to give people a divorce paper? Say, go your merry way. You see, this is not covenant, and this tells me that from get-go, it never was. Never was. 
because God is a covenant keeping God. He said, He said to David, or not to David, to Solomon, because of my covenant with your father, because of that covenant, I will honor you. What do you want? Ask me anything, I will give it to you. Solomon asked for wisdom to rule the nations as his father did. God gave him. Solomon was not perfect. He had his flaws. Solomon had more wives than us here right now. But God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You are not qualified by your own righteousness. You are not qualified by your degrees. You are not qualified by your theological knowledge and whatever. I am sorry to break it to you, but you are not. You see, even Satanists know the Bible. Some of the professors that are teaching theology are atheists. They don't believe what they are reading. So, are you ready to die? Are you ready to die? This is my question to you today. You are the price. You are the price. Are you ready to give up everything you have for him? Are you ready to give up your precious children? Are you ready to give up your precious wife? your precious husband, your beautiful career where you are making lots of money, your lovely, beautiful friends. Because you see, it's a lonely road. It's a lonely road. But the price is you. The price is you. If we look at David, to be chosen attracts jealousy. To walk in favor attracts jealousy. People are going to say, why Why is this happening to you, you know? They don't know the price that you paid. They don't know the tears that you've cried, the nights you've laid awake asking, Lord, why? Lord, where are you? I am alone. I am desperate. Answer me. Do not be quiet when I call. Do not turn your face from me. I need you, Lord. I need you. When nothing else makes sense, he is the only constant. He is that constant. When you don't know what to do, just hold on to the hem of his garment. Hold on to the hem of his garment. You see, You will be persecuted. You will be persecuted. For walking in truth. You will be persecuted. You will be persecuted. Because, yes, we don't have the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Zealots like we did back then. We would probably qualify to be Zealots just without the knives and the, you know, all the butchering and things. But we would probably qualify to be zealots. Um, But just without the killing. You know, the zealots killed for Christ. They believe that was the cause. This kill for Christ. But we still have them, though. We still have them. We still have the holier-than-thou righteous folk, you know, that they've got it all together. They'll give you 10 steps to righteousness and five steps to get to God's heart and to get your prayers answered. (laughs) Good luck with that. And then 29 steps to walking in the Holy Spirit. 
good luck with it. You see, God is the person and he will not be manipulated. What worked for me, Roxy, might not work for you. See, my walk, my journey is mine. It's between him and I. So my 29 steps that I counted na, is not going to work for you. One of the 29 might work, but he made it so, so that you come and find him. He says, seek for me while I might still be found. Seek me and you shall find me. If you seek me with all your heart. You see, you can fool me. But you can't fool him. He knows when you go home this afternoon, you're going to go and sit and watch Siavandalan, the omnibus, and Fazi Anadang Muvangola, and yes, and he's going to stand and wait. We think this is enough. You will die as a Christian and not the death that you want to die. You will die as a believer if your fellowship with God begins and ends here. Because this is not enough. This is not enough. You need to go home and say, Lord, the prophet said this today. Pastor D said this today. Pastor Keisha said this today. Reveal to me more about this word. You know, I want to I know more. Go back to the scripture that was posted and go and read it for yourself and see what revelation you get from that. You know, God will open up more to you. But if you don't seek him, guess what? When you do seek him, when the purple hits the fan, you will not find him. He will stand back and, and look at you. And, I, and there's actually a scripture in Proverbs that says it. That I, I, not a very nice scripture, but it says it. I will look back and laugh at you, Proverbs says. You can go and search that. God is not a fool. My God is not a fool. He's not a fool. He cannot be mocked, Salome. You cannot walk in here Sunday after Sunday sitting there and resisting the Holy Spirit. You cannot do that. It is better for you to stay home than to sit here and resist. You are grieving the Holy Spirit. And this is why I say to the leaders that were not at our prayer last night, I said sit down. Because we are not in one accord. We didn't pray together, so we are not in one spirit. It's not for, for myself, it's for your own good. Sit down. You see, we come in Sunday, Monday we live our lives to Saturday. Saturday night, oh yeah, it's church tomorrow. No, that's it. That's the world's way, my beloveds. So I'm here to ask you, are you ready to mature? Are you ready to die? Are you ready to give all? You know, during COVID, and we shared this with the leaders sometime back during our five-day fast, I shared this with them. We don't share much of our life, but I shared this with them. During COVID, our house was almost foreclosed on. They were, the bank was going to take our house back. They were going to take our car, well, one of our cars back. And I said, Lord, Prophet and I stood together and prayed. And we said, Lord, if we perish, we perish. If by our own stupid wisdom, because our wisdom is stupid in the sight of God. By our own stupid wisdom, we had gathered for ourselves treasures in this world. And you have decided to remove it. We will take a step back. 
If we must get a caravan and go and pull up in green bushes and go and stay there, it's fine. As long as you are with us. Because the Bible says, Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with us. Where can I go from your presence, O oh God? Even if I make my bed in the depths of hell, you are there. So I would rather be a broke Christian than be a Jesusless Christian. I would rather be a broken vessel in his hands than be a complete vessel in the hands of Satan. Are you ready to die? That's my question for you today. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to give up everything? Are you ready to give up your husband, Mama Faith? Are you ready to give him for the gospel? Are you ready for him to leave you for six months to go and preach somewhere? And you don't see him for six months. Are you ready? Are you ready to give up your girls? To have them raised by mama or mama in Pretoria because you need to go and do missions in America. Are you ready? Ready? Are you ready? Are you holding on to the very things that he gave you? And that he can take away like that. With a blink of an eye, you will see me no more. I always joke with my Keisha and I say to her, listen here, if I die and you people cry, I want a celebration service. I want the worship team to pull out all my numbers. They know my numbers. And And I want Nika, I want the dance um, team, Nika and, and Allison and Auntie Tash and the yellow dance group. I want them to render a dance item for me. And I will have Sunday school with the play opposite. I told them already, this is my funeral. So now you all know, if it doesn't happen, you will all be spoken. Because I am entering. <laughs> You will be celebrating with me. It is a joyous day. Yes, you will miss me, but love me now. Enjoy me now. Don't regret that you didn't do something when I am gone. Love me now. Give me flowers now. You know? Then... When it comes to my funeral, you can walk away smiling, saying, I have poured myself out into her. Everything I had, I gave her. There is nothing left. So even though I mourn for my son, and I mourn for my father, and I mourn for my father-in-law, I celebrate. I celebrate. When his birthday comes around, yes, I become emotional while their birthdays. I become emotional because I'm thinking, yo, my little maniki would have been running around here now. He would have been doing this. He would have been doing that. But I celebrate because I know where he is. I saw him going. I saw him going. So I know he is in the best possible hands and he is taken care of better than I could ever take care of him. He is protected more than I could ever protect him. But my job is not done. Their work is done. When I ask God why, God said to me, that's it. There's no more days left in their books. Their books are done. Book closed. That's it. So when your book closes, did you pour yourself out? 
as a drink offering. Or were you bitter and selfish and angry and fighting the whole world? It's a blessing to serve. And it is an honor for me to serve you today. I am grateful to God for this opportunity. I'm grateful for him, for the word that he has given me. You know, Pastor D, last week Sunday when you were ministering, I got this word. I was sitting on stage. I don't know if you saw, I was typing. And the angels were speaking and rolling. I did not hear a word of your sermon. They were talking about the sermon. I had no idea what they were saying. So I, as soon as you uploaded it on Monday, was it Monday or Tuesday? You uploaded on Tuesday. I, oh, did I confirm upload? Okay. As soon as you uploaded, I pressed play because I wanted to hear the sermon because I didn't hear it on Sunday. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. So while you were ministering, the angels were ministering to me. They, thank you. <laughs> so are you ready to give yourself? I'm going to give time. And I want you guys to sing that song again for me. Show me your face, Lord. I'm a, if you are ready to die, I want you to join me in France. You know I don't like laying hands. Not that I don't like laying hands. I choose not to. Um, because, one, I haven't been instructed to. If I am instructed, I will. And two, I believe in equipping you to seek out things for yourself. I don't like spoon feeding. I don't spoon feed my babies. I don't spoon feed the leaders they know. I send them to go and find out for yourself. Yeah. So join me in the front if you are ready to die. And I, this is, I want the leaders as well. Um, you can stay, it's fine. The rest of you, if you are ready to die, the leaders, you don't have a choice. You're already dying. You see, God has already prepared your grave sites. And it's just a matter of you saying, yes, Lord. And you will enter. Please be comfortable, my Lillian. Don't you want to remove your shoes? I do not want you to slip. Your 
face ever, Father. And then gird up my legs that I may stand in this holy place. Pour yourself out before him. Show me your face, Lord Jesus. Your power and your grace. Your step into a new covenant with you today. We renew our covenant with you today. I will make it to the through the blood of Jesus. If I can just we renew see our covenant with you today. Lead us and guide us. Show me your face, Lord. Show me Don't worry, they will be okay. The Holy Spirit doesn't hurt anybody. The Holy Spirit will not hurt anyone. I have fallen more times than I can count in the present, and each time. I got up even better than I went down. Pour out yourself. Pour yourself out. Pour yourself out. Show me Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord, pouring myself out as a drink offering. Receive our worship. Receive our hearts, oh God. I know it is filthy rags in your presence, but because of the blood of Jesus, we are made in right standing with you. Receive our worship. Receive our worship. As we worship from our inner man, as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Receive our worship. Show us your face, oh God. Do not hide it from our Show me. Don't hide your face from our presence, oh God. Jesus. And then go up my legs. And I stand in this holy place. Jesus, show us your face. Thank you. 